Well, this is a, uh, a project that I've started. It's the dreaded uh, change of cams in an E36 M3. If any of you know, they're hollow ground cams and very uh, prone to breaking. So when you start changing them, it can be a little bit frightening, but not too bad. This is the, the middle of the project, but most of the boring stuff has happened before that. Um, to make things easier, we've uh, taken the hood off, something I've done a few times, four bolts and a couple clips and it comes off and it gives you much better access to the engine and gives you working room. So far what I've done to get ready for this is to remove most of the things around the engine. The radiator is out of it along with the fan and everything around it. All of the air induction system is out of it as well as the shroud. Uh, that's an all aluminum can that goes around the uh, high velocity ducting. And then all the parts that came out of the engine, all the coils, parts, everything are set out so that they're easy to track. And uh, every part that comes out has a bag. And I've labeled every one so that I know exactly where it goes back and it takes a little of the, the fright out of putting it back together and you've got this many parts scattered around. The other thing that I've done is to take very good notes of all the work that I've done as well as notes to myself, things to remember, things to do um, so that I don't forget as I go through it because there's always a risk of uh, forgetting something and then hitting a valve on a piston, something like that as you're building it and causing more damage than you started with. The goal of this project is to put brand new lifters in the engine. Uh, it's got 130,000 miles on it, been used on the track a lot, and so I've got all new lifters ordered from Pelican Parts. And of course the credit for taking these cams out goes to Wayne Dempsey at Pelican Parts in his book 101 Projects, which does a great job of defining how to do it. And uh, I thank him, and I'll give him credit for doing this if it works, and if not, then uh, Wayne gets credit for not working, but he's been very helpful. We're starting at the point where I've got a, a wrench on the crankshaft, as you can see, that lets me move the crank off top dead center. And where the wrench is right now moves the pistons down in the cylinder all away from the valve. So as I start turning those cams, which I'm doing because all of the timing chain and everything is removed, and as you can see, even the timing chain on the, on the uh, exhaust valves is uh, removed. So they're all free. They can turn any direction, which means those valves could open and close. You've got to get the pistons away from the top of the cylinder head to make sure that you don't bang the valves on the pistons. The next job is to start finding what's called a sweet spot on the cams. You can see a wrench sitting on the cam. There's a nice machined area on the back of the camshafts that lets you put a wrench on it to turn them. And we're looking for a spot where only the cylinder one cams are pushing down on the valves. You can see here that the cam lobes are straight down on cylinder 1, but on cylinder 2, cylinder 3, and 4, and the cams are off at an angle there, it's hard to see, and 5, those cams are off at an angle, and 6 are all taking pressure away, so there's no pressure on those, and as we begin to take it all apart, the only section of the cam that will have pressure on it is on cylinder 1. And the secret here is never to bend that camshaft when you're taking it out. One other thought as you're working on your car, um, labeling each of the wires that you come off, like this for coil 6, makes it very easy to put things back together and remember where everything goes. Since my memory is not so great, um, this makes it much easier. And you can see I also have removed a lot of the ignition wiring and computer stuff to get it all out of the way to make that head wide open and very easy to work on. It takes the uh, stress out of it and since it's a very delicate process then uh, want to have as much access to it as I can. So the next phase will be to begin to remove the um, bearing caps for cylinders 2 through 6, get all of those off, leaving only cylinder 1 attached which will have all the load on it and uh, making sure that we put no stress on that cam at any other point because it will bend or break if we uh, put any kind of a bow in that cam and we're taking it out. Okay, this is step two. We're in the process of taking out the cams. We've got a wrench on the cam here to make sure it doesn't turn. 
and we're taking a quarter turn on all of the caps in order to take tension off the cam. The only tension we should have right now is on this one where the valves are down, all the rest of these are loose and we're going to start going back and, and starting backing those off a quarter turn. So let's go again. We'll start with the back one which has already got a quarter turn on it and I'll put a quarter turn here and it's already loose which is good because there should be no tension. And this is six. These very hats are all marked so you know exactly how they go. The uh, the lettering on these go on top, so for, that's interesting. That's different than the other. That's one. different. Well, I think they're labeled different. Um, the the lettering that was on the bottom. On these, that I was think, on the bottom. Yeah. On here, it's on the top. So that's something that we need to keep track of. You definitely don't want to put the exhaust on the intake. Well, they're all marked. I'm, yeah, they're all Ausfund is I think German for exhaust, so these are marked as an A, and the intakes are marked with an E, which is Eintraub, I think, which is intake. Because they're all, how you say, burnished together? Yep. And this guy's, so now the only one is that guy. So now we can take this guy, go a little bit further with it. No other caps are on, right? Nope. So it should be free to come up. You know, um, you know before you get too far, you make sure... You're not going to pop that nut off down in there. It's not going to fall down in that hole, is it? You know, your point's a good one. Let me, uh... It just, it would be, it would suck. Yeah, it would. It would suck bad without, you know, putting any pressure on or anything. So I'll put this rag in here. Just to make sure. I mean, you need to, that means you just have to take the front half of the motor off. Yeah. If a magnet be, couldn't get to it. It wouldn't you know? be hard, would it? So how about that? Just give you something else to do. Yeah. That's where it stopped. I'm not feeling that much on the cam. Yeah, these are loose, actually. So, okay, so we're all attention's off now. That makes me believe that it doesn't have the same lift, or the cam's at a different angle. Yeah, maybe the front lobes are a little different angle. So there's the last two. In theory, I can take this guy take off. Take the cap off, and now I can relax, because you are clear. I'm done. So, if everything works the way we hope, I can pull that cam out just like that. How about that, guys? So, I'll put it like this. Then, put this back in here. Because I don't know where all of those things are going to go when I lift it. Take this uh, guy and stick him on there so when I lift it out at least he doesn't fall down in the front of the engine. And I got, I got it here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that, they all kind of stay, that, that one's just at an angle so they all kind of stay. Definitely, the motor's really clean though. I mean, it looks like a new motor in the way of uh, got no carbon buildup, no black crap or nothing no, like that. Really you know? clean. So you can kind of see as we uh, took it apart that the lifters fell out of that tray and they're just kind of laying there, but we'll pick them out and then we'll start with the reassembly process after all of this. All right, so now it's reassembly time, and we've got one of the uh, trays back in holding the lifters. And you can see the lifters just sitting down in there, and they will slide out very easy, and this is the, the bottom of it. So we had to devise a method to be able to tip this thing 180 degrees and hold those lifters in there while we slipped it over the um, studs. And of course, they all want to fall out. And uh, so let me show you how we did it, and you can devise your own methods. What we did is we took two pieces of tape and we just set it over the top of those taunt and then two of us hold those tight when we flip it upside down it kind of holds the lifters in and then once we get it slid over the studs we just pull the tape out the end and that worked really well. We can hold all the lifters in without adding any contaminants or anything and uh, makes this process much easier. 
Okay, here we go. So now I've got my lifter rail sideways and I'm going to try to get it fitted over the studs. And slide it down. That works really well. And then if you can just lift it up a little bit. Hey, let me help you out here. I'll take some pressure off the back here. And then slide the tape out like this. That's, and it works that's, perfect that's every beautiful. time. So now reassembly is just uh, get everything oiled up good, make sure we got the lubrication, and then we'll put the cams back in. Okay, we've got the cam back in the car, and I'm starting with cylinder two. I've got the journal cap back on, and what we've done is, if you see that little mark right there on that cam, that was, when on top, that is the sweet spot on the cam. But I've got it set off just a little bit to take some pressure off this to get the nuts started. And once I get one or two threads on the nuts, then I'm going to turn the cam back to the sweet spot, and then we'll start the reassembly. Okay, so what we've done is that worked. We had this cam turned a little bit so we could get these nuts started, and then I made a little spanner wrench that goes over the Vanos uh, mount point, and I turned the cam back into the sweet spot position after I had a, a turn or two on these nuts. So now we're just going to back it down a quarter turn at a time and get the cam back into position. And he's loose, so this, in fact, I don't think this should even be. You might bind it. Yeah, let's take him out. Okay, so here we go, quarter turn. Make a quarter turn on this loaded bearing. all the forces right there, I don't see nothing breaking. No way. It doesn't seem like no. this would load that cam. Because so we're good in the journals everywhere, right? Everything looks good? Everything looks good. Alright, I'm going to keep going. While I'm pulling the wrench, I'm kind of pu pushing down on the cam into the... And I'm going to take one more turn on this guy, because I'm not even. I can see more... No, I don't, that's not true. I'm going to keep going. Turn. What I don't know is when I put those nuts on originally, if I had them exactly the same number of turns. I think I did, but... Snugging up a little bit, and this one's probably just a little bit looser. A lot looser. Maybe you're, yeah, the thing is, I see a gap. Okay, on I'm, I'm just starting to get. Yeah, you're, you're, it looks like you're bottoming out close to on the inboard side and the outboard side. It's still got a gap. Like you, you still, you're out of portion, or maybe it's just an illusion. Yeah, I think that's pretty. You see the more threads on the inboard. It's getting considerably snugger, so I think we're okay. So I think we've got the cam down. Now you're going to hold that for me. We'll put all the other caps back on before we do anything else. All right, we're successful. All of the cams are back in using Wayne's procedure. So my compliments to Mr. Dempsey at Pelican Parts for documenting how to do this. And... Uh, Showing us do-it-yourselfers what needs to be done. We got all the caps back on. The cams are in one piece. All new lifters are in. So now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. <laughs>